there's an emergency and you're out somewhere in the, in the woods or on the back road, you have to get somewhere where you can call for help. You know, you can't just you know, pull out your phone because it, it's not going to work. Here in the rural towns, we haven't had cell coverage or broadband for the most part. It's just been the way it is. It could be very scary, I mean, depending on the situation. It could be the difference between life and death for someone. Our entire telecommunications infrastructure is really changing. We were really landline phone dependent, and that's changing. But not changing where it's including everyone. I'm concerned that we are not recognizing that we could have a pretty serious vulnerability developing in rural Vermont and rural America. In 1934, the Federal Communications Act required phone companies to expand landlines into rural communities. But there's no such legal obligation for cell service in the same areas. So in places like southern Vermont, reception can range from spotty to non-existent. Fed up residents are pushing the state for solutions. Almost none of Reedsboro has any cell coverage. The only place if you continue up the hill, where I was going, about another half a mile, there's a sp one spot if you stop, you can get a signal. <laughs> Through the fire department, you know, we have a radio dispatch system. So that has been our, our lifeline, so to speak, for that kind of thing. So anytime there's been an emergency when phones are down or it's a storm situation, we're, we have been able so far to still get the radio dispatch through. We have a base radio here that we can communicate to folks out in the field or back to dispatch. And the, it also includes a repeater system so that if we're into those nooks and crannies in the, in the valleys of the town, hopefully the repeater will give us enough signal to get into those, those areas. Uh, but there's still areas that are not covered. In 2011, Tropical Storm Irene caused infrastructure damage in 90% of the towns in Vermont. The water has filled the streets. Over 500 miles of roadways were closed, and broken landlines left communities like Reedsboro stranded. The cables are in such poor condition that run out of these back roads and rural roads, where every time it rains, you get a bad connection. And you know, we should be doing something better, but it's all we have currently is, is the landlines for most of the town. What happened in Irene is we were cut off communication-wise, so there's no cell service in town. That basically meant all of these other towns were, were islands. Like, we were able to make phone calls within town to each other, um, but not to make any calls out of town. And it was uh, pretty scary, actually, when, you, when we heard, you know, the state of things and, uh, you know, formed a, a broadband and cell phone committee in town, and I, you know, volunteered to be a part of that. Uh, and that's something that's still kind of an ongoing effort. State Representative Laura Sibilia has been working directly with residents like Omar. In 2017, she advocated to form Vermont's House Committee on Energy and Technology. The group now oversees projects to connect rural areas, like Reedsboro, with large service providers. I first met Omar. I went to a select board meeting in Reedsboro shortly after being elected and got a finger wagon. Uh, what are you going to do? about connectivity. And I said, I'm not going to be able to do anything without you. So let's bring the Department of Public Service down, let's bring the phone company down, and let's hear what's happening here. And he's worked as a great liaison with the town, the state, and the providers. If every town had an Omar, we'd be in great shape. Um, but that's also a little bit of a vulnerability, right? So we're relying on this you know, really big-hearted, talented, capable volunteer. I think we need to make sure that we put um, systems in place around him. There was not really a place for uh, a connectivity all on its own, technology or IT. So brand new committee, got our feet wet on a, a lot of connectivity projects and a few energy projects the first two years. In 2018, the state ended a multi-million dollar project with Coverage Co., a small cell service company. This company wasn't able to provide reliable reception to all the rural areas it had promised, or turn a profit. With $900,000 still on the table, the state is waiting on new proposals from service providers. Until then, places like towns in Vermont are relying on temporary solutions to save lives. 
One of the challenges that we face in rural medicine is mountains create dead zones for our radios and our communications. So from the field, we're, we, we quite often feel like we're, we're all by ourselves out there. There's no way for us to talk to the doctors. There's no way for us to transmit the information as far as their cardiac monitors, ultrasound, IV pumps, ventilators. We've had to upgrade our abilities in our treatment protocols. Our paramedics are board certified critical care. Uh, they're able to provide the same level of treatment as you would see on most helicopter crews. So on our operation side, uh, it makes it very difficult for us to track our ambulances and know where they're at in our system because the, the service is so spotty that uh, they'll drop off of the, the cell phone networks and then they'll be missing for what could be 35, 40 minutes, uh, not knowing kind of where they are in, in an emergency and not being able to communicate with them. So uh, they actually pulled this across the country from Missouri to Vermont uh, on the back of a truck. It's a very sophisticated piece of equipment that communicates and sends signals back and forth between this device and a satellite. This tower sends radio frequency signals that uh, allow us to provide service to those who are in the immediate vicinity of our community. And so the governor has helped us particularly with some service that we otherwise would not have had and did not have a few years ago. I just couldn't imagine running a hospital in a location where providers, doctors, nurses, emergency personnel, community members, visitors didn't have the ability to make a phone call unless they were close to a, a landline. I began to ask the question, well, how, I wonder how many hospitals in this country are in communities without cell phone service? It just doesn't, doesn't make sense to me that we can put a man on the moon, yet we can't figure out how to provide a, a signal across the entire country. It's an interim step, but it's a step closer to our ultimate objective, which is to have 24-7, 100% reliability. But we're better off than we were when we had nothing. This is Main Street. Uh, we have the, the Reedsboro Inn back there, which is uh, one of the few businesses right in town. There's another little restaurant here, um, open for breakfast and lunch four days a week. Um, and then there's a general store up here. And that's, and that's, and that's really about it <laughs> for businesses in town, um, right in town here. I think it's tougher and tougher for these communities to survive. Population gets smaller, less kids in the school, makes it hard for any, any business that's in town. I think it's detrimental to, to the whole community. Realistically, you know, a for-profit company is not gonna spend you know, millions of dollars on an infrastructure that they're never gonna recoup their investment. I guess what I hope will happen is some funds can be developed, and I think it needs to happen on the federal level, not just the state level, but I think somehow we have to put money into that infrastructure. People do not want to live in communities that are not connected. And so the people that are left behind, what's happened with them? You don't see the impacts of that today. You know, you see the impacts of that in 10 years, in 20 years. You're really creating wide spaces here in terms of moving forward in, in modern life. And there's consequences to that. I believe that Vermont is actually going to wrestle this issue to the ground.